training design for the Elias George Wrestling Foundation by Coach Shannon. These are the contents of this slideshow that's going to be presented. EGWF stands for Elias George Wrestling Foundation, and we will be describing the preseason, the postseason, the basics of the periodization model that we're going to use, the warm-ups, competition plan, and the camps. EGWF, again, stands for Elias George Wrestling Foundation. is a partnership with North Shore Wrestling Clubs and educational institutions to provide world-class coaching in our communities. Preseason training. Now, the preseason and postseason trainings are going to both be out of the normal or the traditional season. And the reason why this has become really popular among all sports is because once people found out that you could actually gain an advantage by the amount of hours that you were training, everybody actually started to do it. And I think what's going to set us apart from everyone else is the way in which we design our preseason and postseason training plans in as much as they're going to be at least two to three times per week. They might be 1.5 hours up to 2 hours, and as you see as we go through it, we'll explain why the drilling and the technique in the live wrestling, how they are periodized and how that can become high performance training. Preseason curriculum, we have a middle school program too, and this is primarily going to be for the high school programs that we're talking about right now. Uh, there's a different set of basic skills that the middle school students need to master prior to learning all of these things. However, anytime an athlete comes in, we would still be working on the basic skills that you see here, and then there's another set of basic skills, seven basic skills that need to be mastered prior to this. Many of the skills actually do carry over, so whenever an athlete enters any one of our programs, they're going to they're gonna have an opportunity to master all of the basic skills. Periodized preseason intensities. This is the crux of why I believe uh, some programs are better than others in terms of offering programming during the preseason and the postseason, along with uh, you know, when the athletes go to their, their club or their high school uh, teams. That means they will be training 7, 8, 9, 10 months out of the year because they are training all of those different months, if you look at the bottom there, you can see how in this particular case, it's from week one to week eight. If you go across from left to right, you'll notice how the ropes and the live wrestling in minutes, they're varied. They change. Per week, they change. Uh, if you just looked at the live wrestling in minutes, it goes from 12 minutes, 14 minutes, to 16 minutes. The fourth week, it goes back down to 13, 15, 17. And the seventh week, it goes back down to 14 and 14. Theoretically, at the end of that time, you would reduce the volume of training again so the athletes could peak for a tournament. Now, I pointed this out on an earlier slide. If you're training year-round or pretty close to year-round, the training has to be periodized. In other words, you don't want to be doing the same amount of volume of wrestling year-round. Otherwise, the athletes actually do become flat. And this is a challenge, I think, even in some club and high school programs. Uh, at the beginning of the season, there should be a different amount of wrestling than in the middle of the season, and there should be a different amount of wrestling towards the end of the season. That's what makes it a high-performance training program. Postseason training, somewhat of the same information there with regard to the training, except in for wrestling, this is when we would really focus on freestyle and Greco-Roman, trying to get athletes to see that these are the different styles, and this is the Olympic style, and this is what they do around the world. In terms of the training blocks and the amount of time that they would be wrestling, they would be really similar. Again, the difference between the postseason and the preseason would simply be the style of wrestling. Uh, as I have been telling some of my athletes and some of the coaches that I've been working with, I was able to become a folk style stamp state champion because I was able to win freestyle and Greco-Roman. I actually won freestyle and Greco-Roman state before I was an IHSA or Illinois high school state champion. And just again, to, to make more sense, postseason is going to be Olympic style wrestling, which actually gives the athletes a break from folk style, and they still are able to use many of the same skills. So it's like a cross-training for the most part, except it's really, 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 really close to uh, the other sport. Some cross-training perhaps is, you know, you can call the weightlifting and strength and conditioning cross-training because it's going to help your sport better. Freestyle and Greco-Roman are so similar to our sport. I don't even know if you can call them cross-training, but they are definitely something that's going to make the folk style wrestling better. And I believe that's a very important part of the postseason training. Postseason curriculum. You can see there we've got skills that we're going to be working on for all three different styles. 
depending on what style you're doing, you're going to you know, have to focus on a little bit different skill sets. In terms of the Olympic style of wrestling, gut wrench, is, you're going to have to learn how to do both of those to learn how to offensively attack them <clears throat> and the actual counter attacks. Now, when you put all these together, you have a completely well-rounded wrestler. And I believe, again, when you go from postseason to preseason, you actually get a break from doing some of the skills that you're actually, you know, going to be using in a different part of the season. However, you're still strengthening the main muscles of your sport, which are wrestling muscles, and you're giving your your body a break from doing the same things. And that's a big part of the periodization and the training, high performance training too. When you are stimulated because sometimes you're giving your body a break from doing what you've just done you actually can do what you're going back to stronger to make a long story short when you break up the season into segments and you do different things because the practices are varied you can actually become better Periodized postseason intensities. This one is a little bit longer. We're going to actually have two eight-week blocks. I've just kind of portioned them together here. But as you can see, again, if you go from left to right, uh, it, the, everything changes. I believe rope, rope climbing is a big part of uh, the grip strength. So I always put that on there so you can clearly see how the they start off at three and then it goes all the way back down to three. In case of the wrestling in live minutes, it starts off at 12 and then it goes all the way down to 16. You'd be saying, well, shouldn't we be increasing the amount of wrestling that we're doing? as the season progresses yes to a certain extent around week nine you actually you know you start go the other way because it's that's a long time to be increasing uh the wrestling and if you keep increasing to a certain point there's a like a point of no return you actually start to decrease your fitness when you go beyond that point because you will actually be competing and you'll be having training you don't need to do nearly as much wrestling and again that's one of the uh, mistakes a lot of coaches make where they just either leave the same intensity in terms of wrestling, let's say 12 minutes for the whole season, or they leave the same amount at 18 minutes for the whole season. Both of those are, you know, they may not give you the highest performance of training because they are, they are unperiodized, if that makes sense. So, again, the, the whole idea behind periodizing training is to vary the amount of training to get a better response. Practice plan. Now, this is an hour and a half practice plan. It could be two hours or it could be 45 minutes. The idea, though, is that you're breaking up the training times into specific periods or blocks of training. There I've listed 30 minute, 30 minute, 30 minute, and each 30 minutes you're actually going to do something different. It could be two hours and then you would, it would still be portioned off so the entire practice is not the same thing. Again, when you vary the practice, the body is stimulated and you get a better response that way. Uh, I'm, I'm just giving you an example of an hour and a half long practice where it could be shorter, it could be longer, but I want you to focus on how it's broken up into segments so it is very organized and then when things are more organized, you, normally you should have a very good training response. Now, you can mix this up. You can do drilling and then live, or you could do drilling and then technique, or you could, you know, mix it up so it's not the same thing all the time. Instead of doing 10 minutes on the feet, maybe you do, you know, 20 minutes on the feet for the total, or maybe you do 20 minutes in parts here, or maybe you do, you know, 12 on the feet and then 8 in parts. So, the, just so that you're varying it, you're not doing the same thing all the time, and you can do that with each segment of the practice. As long as you stay within whatever that, that portion is, like 30 minutes, you can change the amount of drills that you're doing. Technique, you can change the amount of drills where maybe it's all on your feet one day, or maybe it's all on the bottom one day, or maybe it's a mixture like it is here. So, again, when you vary the practices in that periodized way, now you're stimulating the athlete's mind so they do not get dull. A big reason why practice gets boring because it actually, you know, they, they're kind of falling asleep in practice because you're doing the same thing all the time. Warm-ups, again, keeping with that same concept. The more different types of warm-ups that you can do, the better off they are. Now, I've just listed four here, and typically throughout the season, athletes will start to memorize the warm-ups. Then you can actually let them lead. I typically have eight or nine or ten different warm-ups just to change up the practice plan, give the athletes a little bit of chance uh, to stimulate their minds. And the, they actually start to enjoy it. It actually starts to become fun. When I coached... Uh, in the last couple of years at Overtime School of Wrestling, what some of the athletes would say to me was, man, these practices are so much different than our others. And what they would say was, we do the same practice for the whole season. You know, after about 30 times in a row, they, they kind of get sick of it. But if you keep changing it, and it's not, you know, not designed so they can't remember anything, but a lot of these workouts, they have some of the same components. They're just working a little bit of a different muscle. Again, it's stimulating. When things are stimulating, you usually have a better response. Competitions, again, I, I want to point out it's a preseason and it's a postseason type of training. So, 
EGWF recommends a blow tournament for cadet and junior age group wrestlers. I stress cadet and junior age group wrestlers because at that point, they should have realistic goals of making it to the state tournament or perhaps placing in state or perhaps being a state champion and or making it to the freestyle state, making a junior national team, going to junior nationals, going to cadet nationals. At that point, at those age groups, I think it's okay to wrestle uh, once a month or so outside of the season. I do not recommend uh, lower than cadet or junior age wrestlers doing that if they intend to wrestle in high school and beyond. Does that make sense? So if you don't really intend to wrestle in high school and beyond, you can wrestle as much as you want. If you want to wrestle in high school and beyond, you have to be very careful about how many competitions you have because burnout is real. Athletes get sick of training just because they've had too many matches. I always like to give this analogy, and this you can the number can change, but let's say 300 matches is your total, and you do 250 before you get to high school. Now, there's no way for, for us to know what the precise number is going to be, but if we're using that 300 as the, you know, the barometer, if we've done 250 before we've actually got to high school, now there's a chance that we're going to burn out. And that actually does happen, just, just so that you can be aware of that. That, again, is the whole reason why we have periodized training as well, so you can create a high-performance training plan. That is a long-term athlete development. Summer camp. The Elias George Wrestling Foundation will host summer training camps annually in July. So if our athletes forego the junior national trip, then they have an opportunity to work on their skill sets in the summer. Also, athletes that may be just getting into the sport, we're going to give them an opportunity over the summer. So when this, the fall season starts, they are you know more up to speed than they would not be if they just started in the fall. Last short wrestling camps are a great way to increase your practice hours and hone your wrestling ability. Again, I'm a firm believer in practice hours. I think you should have more hours of training than you do competition, which is probably diametrically opposed to the way a lot of coaches think. Studies have shown, though, at least the studies that I've looked at at the Olympic training centers, you need to have more practice hours than you actually do need to have competition hours. So that's why, again, I'm not so keen on, you know, the little guys wrestling 100 matches per year. It's not necessary. What is necessary, though, is they get the right, right amount of practice training hours and the right amount of training while they're there. So they're learning the basic skills, having fun, and then they're increasing their ability at the same time. The end. We're actually going to have information available on our Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter pages, and you will always be able to go to those pages anytime you need, and you can kind of look at the information right there to get more information on the Elias George Wrestling Foundation. Thank you.